SCP-136, Naked Doll, Object Class, Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. No extraordinary containment procedures are necessary. SCP-136 is to be kept in a standard 10 meter by 10 meter by 10 meter concrete containment room. SCP-136-1 is to be kept in a locked, transparent, plastic case measuring 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters, placed on a table in the center of the room. Video surveillance is unnecessary when SCP-136 is not being actively examined. As of Incident I-136-C, see Incident Reports, only Class D personnel may enter the SCP-136 containment chamber more than once in any 30-day period without special authorization from Director. Description: SCP-136 has no effect on non-humans. SCP-136 describes two phenomena. SCP-136-1 is of variable appearance but generally manifests as a crude clay, wood, metal, or cloth doll usually identifiable as female, and usually between 10 and 30 centimeters in length. The doll appears as male in approximately 10% of viewings. SCP-136-1 has no unusual properties that can be measured empirically. Mass spectrometry of samples taken from the doll return typical results for its present material. When the doll is damaged to the extent where it no longer appears human, Usually upon removal of the head or limbs, it vanishes completely and reappears in a new configuration within one meter radius. Testing of complete vaporization pending. SCP-136-2 manifests only when SCP-136-1 is viewed for approximately 20 minutes, though like SCP-136-1, it has a somewhat variable form. The first indication of SCP-136-2's presence is a sound of laughter of a gender corresponding to the appearance of SCP-136-1. Personnel who hear the laughter report it sounding as creepy or scary. The laughter lasts for an interval of anywhere from 5 seconds to 2 minutes, after which is a period of silence, usually of about 5 minutes. After the period of silence, SCP-136-2 appears along with the abrupt disappearance of SCP-136-1. SCP-136-2 is an incorporeal, nude or partially nude figure corresponding to the gender of SCP-136-1. SCP-136-2, ranging in size from 1.9 to 2.1 meters, is always posed in a provocative manner and moves through the air at a slow walking pace. 0.2 meters per second towards the subject. If more than one subject is present, each will see the form as moving towards him or herself. As it approaches, the volume of the laughter increases. By the time SCP-136-2 is within 1 to 2 meters, the subject invariably has gone rigid in fear, collapsed, or backed up until he or she hits a wall. SCP-136-2 usually remains stiff until it is within approximately 5 centimeters of the subject, whereupon it will scream once before vanishing. 10 to 15 seconds later, SCP-136-1 will reappear in its previous location in a different configuration. The apparition has a very disturbing appearance. Its mouth is far too wide, frozen in a rictus of pain and arousal. It will occasionally bare its teeth or lick its lips. Its irises take up almost the entire sclera of its eyes, which appear mad and bloodshot. If female, it will have an absurdly narrow waist and large breasts. The experience of viewing SCP-136-2 is profoundly upsetting and has universally caused night terrors for up to six months in every single subject, possibly as a result of its psychic intrusion. After a viewing, most subjects are unable to leave the containment room without assistance. Interestingly, Class D personnel with a history of sexual deviancy still experience a strong negative reaction to 136-2. At no point has SCP-136-2 been observed to move past the boundaries of its containment room. Disregard, see Incident Report I-136-A. Additional Information SCP-136 was recovered from the children's bedroom of an abandoned house in that was reportedly haunted. 
a routine sweep of such reported homes by Foundation personnel discovered SCP-136 when Agent fell from a second-story window, screaming. Incident Reports Incident I-136-A 19 Dr. Simon was the 25th subject to observe 136-2 and the 4th to do so voluntarily. The viewing proceeded in the usual manner with no anomalies. Approximately two hours after viewing 136-2, Dr. Simon, who was in the break room with several other researchers, screamed and dropped his coffee mug. He incoherently indicated that he could see 136-2 floating down the hall towards him. Dr. Morris and Dr. Harrison restrained him, assuming that he had simply been badly shaken by the experience. After approximately two minutes, all present in the room fell unconscious. Dr. Soboya recovered first and proceeded to awaken her colleagues. Dr. Simon had lapsed into a coma and died three days later. Dr. Myers requests reclassification to Keter class. Reclassification to Keter class denied. We cannot dismiss the possibility that the unfortunate incident wasn't caused by some other telepathic SCP. Incident I-136-B 2000 It happened again today. Agent shoved a few Class Ds into the room, and he was standing outside with 136 finished doing its thing, and I was helping them drag the subjects out of the room when everything went black. I woke up to Agent smacking me in the face and three D-classes in comas. This thing is killing people. We haven't learned anything new from it in ten years, and we can't use it. I request that we find a way to terminate 136. Maybe get a psychic SCP in here with it. It's not like burning it will do anything. Dr. Myers. Request for termination denied. 136 is proving valuable for enhanced interrogation. Incident I-136-C 2000 This is getting out of control now. You all saw what happened. Hell, everyone in a thousand yards will never forget. And the Class D in the room is gone and nobody knows how. At the very least, we need to do some more rigorous screening of the Ds before sending them in. We would have found out that he was ahead of time. Thank God we've figured out what set it off, though. Request reclassification to Keter and permission for attempted termination of 136. Dr. Myers. Request denied. Dr. Myers is to be removed from administration of SCP-136. Disposition of 136 is to be given directly to Overseer and Dr. for exclusive use in enhanced interrogation. End file.